So um, I present uh, together with Beatrice Cavule, um, <coughs> scientific coordinator um, at Harvard University, um, the uh, project, project, project um, which is a, a project that is uh, starting from the idea that we uh, will look into the, the interrelationship between policies, uh, protective policies, and emotion. So the general idea of the project was that uh, we actually can have two observations in these times that you already alluded to in, in your opening speeches, that uh, we live in an age of insecurity and that this changes the dynamics of politics. Um, that individuals feel insecure and seek protection, and also we see politicians increasingly compete about productive policy. So if you look at some countries where we see that uh, there was a lot of political uh, discussions and competition about uh, crime, about migration, about law and order policy. So all this is related to the protective policy, so the, the, the idea that uh, governments try to, to, to propose protection to, to their people. And uh, both parts are also interrelated, so sometimes with positive feedback, so sometimes you will have um, feelings of insecurity that are responded to by uh, governmental policies that in, in the end also recreate feelings of insecurity uh, resulting in uh, overreaction of policies toward these, these feelings. Um, so this is one side of, of this. This is the observation from the policy side. I'm a public policy scholar um, that uh, how policies are made and what dynamics we can actually observe. <coughs> and the other part of this is that we know that protective policies, so politics that are about policies that are about protecting people and also presented it as protective in communication uh, are very much uh, linked to emotions. Um, so we have this book, for instance, by Abbott and Gadarian on anxious policies, politics, where they show the inter interlinkages between emotions such as fear and then how this is responded to by, uh, by government policies in different uh, ways. And this is very much linked to emotional processes. Um, and emotions. So we have many empirical illustrations from out there, for instance, um, you all remember, I guess, the Yellow Vest movement in France, and the Danish safety election. Uh, we have protests, also deep, all deeply emotional and driven by emotions. And very often the people that, that seek, uh, uh, that show their anger or their fear, um, they attend to or they, they ask governments to, to provide them with protection. So we have a link between the feelings of insecurity and public policies, and we think that this is constructed in political communication to a certain extent, and also in policies and how they are communicated to the public. Um, in the end, what we think is a result of this is that politics actually may be much less about material security, but about feelings and emotions of multi-dimensional security, and I will come back to that in a minute. So the research questions and the general approach of this project is that we start with policymakers and how they perceive emotional needs of citizens, how they influence they, their, the needs of citizens and how these perceptions as well as the emotions to related to that uh, play out in the policy process. The second question is what reactions uh, these uh, protective policies actually elicit among individuals and publics in society. And then the third question was how these emotional reactions of citizens then feedback on the policy process and are in turn responded to with policies. If you look at the slide and the small graph uh, from, the, from the proposal, um, you actually see an orange that we start from the perceptions of citizens' feelings of insecurities and their emotional needs by policymakers and the policy making processes and strategies around that. There's this idea of having, for instance, emotional entrepreneurs who, who actually seek to, to influence people uh, people's emotions to then construct their policies that they want to and to sell it to, to sell them to the public. In the second step, we look at policies. This is the blue box. Uh, so, to protect policies and communications, how are these protective policies communicated? In what relation uh, to emotions are they communicated? And then, in the last step, we look at to, to the green box, where we look at how these communication and protective policies, what they actually do, and they will elicit emotional reactions on the individual level, on the group level, and also participation and mobilization uh, in society. And then the third arrow that you see there is the feedback process. So how does this affect uh, feedback onto policy making? The implications on the theoretical side, 
so this was just the, the research design. We'll see what that makes, uh, uh, what comes out of this. But uh, the implications of the theoretical side are in two ways. Uh, that's actually what we have as what I call here bits and pieces of the theoretical framework. And we will bring these ideas together in the first uh, seven months of the project. And this will be a, a very interesting endeavor. We already started talking about that yesterday. <coughs> and we'll see uh, how far we will bring it. And uh, it will be. Uh, at least interesting uh, to see how this uh, goes together. The two parts are, first, the idea coming from the public policy side about representative democracy, models of representation and responsiveness that are usually based on, well, the idea that people have preferences, the media note has preferences, and then the politics respond to that with some material policies. So people, the media note, want small social policies, and then at some point, um, politics will respond and uh, actually adopt policies uh, that uh, try to react to this to this need of citizens, which is a material need, usually, a preference. So this is the standard model I just quoted, so Messi here and Dalton, that are kind of the standard model representatives. And then the second, uh, on the second hand, we find emotional aspects of representative democracy is under research because we don't really see how emotions play into the policy-making process. This is our contribution on the theoretical part. Uh, there's a bit uh, out there in terms of literature starting to emerge, for instance, a nice paper by Flinders and Hinterleitner on uh, grievance politics and party politics, how parties and this representation uh, comes into play here, but there's not so much out there, and we think that it's relevant to look also at emotional, we call it in the grand agreement, uh, in the grand emotional responsiveness, something that links the emotional side of politics on the individual level to uh, the policy making. And the second bit and piece of our theoretical framework is the idea that um, a lot of these models just think about the media voter or a citizen that is, uh, that is out there and that polit is irrelevant for politics. And we forget that uh, citizens are not just the citizens, but we have very much different groups in the citizens. We have also non-citizens, refugees, asylum seekers that are part of our societies. We have multi-layered citizens. Um, that we have to, to look at. And that's why we have within the project uh, a specific focus on different groups of citizens and non-citizens and how their emotional needs are perceived, reflected in policies and how these groups also react to protective policies. So really uh, also disentangling these, uh, these different concepts. Um, so this will be the next seven months where we start with this theoretical framework to bring together these two parts of rather unrelated uh, literatures, I guess, in the usual policy, uh, political science uh, work, but we try to connect them and build something new and innovative from them. Okay. Uh, a very last slide on the research design, just to see what we are going to do. So we will have a, uh, starting with uh, the orange box, we have uh, small and comparative case studies and process tracing on the emotional needs, their perception, and the policy process in uh, notably uh, Denmark, Germany, and Israel. Then we will have on the blue side, uh, with six countries, a qualitative content analysis of policy on political communication to carve out what emotional aspects are visible in public policies and the communication about them. And also we have uh, a media analysis um, that is that is done about the, uh, that is also used to 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 see what, what emotional. Uh, aspects can be found in, in media content in six countries. And then in the green box, looking into the emotional reactions and consequences of protective policies, uh, we have a big survey that is done by uh, our dear colleague Katarzyna. Uh, this will be a, a nice and also interesting uh, thing to set up and to, 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 to collect data from in 11 countries. And we have focus groups, uh, on the other hand, also in six countries where we look at emotional consequences and emotional reactions, reactions not actually the And in addition to that, in order to really look into this idea of multilayered citizenship, we and, and certain groups in society that might be affected uh, very differently or also very prominently by emotions and protective policies, we have four deep dives or five deep, di deep dives where we look into specific. Uh, aspects. One is in Denmark about marginal populations and the policies that the Danish government has been proposing um, and implementing. A deep dive about protective housing policies in Portugal. We have a deep dive in Italy about emotional narratives and two deep dive about effective citizenship with Ukrainian refugees in four countries and also a German deep dive with non-citizens where we want to look into how they uh, perceive emotions and protection. 
Now, who is part of Protemo? Um, I tried to, and uh, the yellow star is, uh, is Saarbrücken, so uh, uh, I'm sorry for that. That was what Google, uh, Google Maps was doing when, because I was sitting at home. Um, so the coordination team is Beatrice and myself in Saarland, which is, uh, as you can see, just at the border uh, between France and Germany um, and a very uh, French-German city. Um, and we are coordinating this meeting, uh, the deep dive on Germany uh, by Beatrice and also uh, the political communication and, uh, public, uh, and the um, content analysis part on policy. So I'm a public policy scholar and uh, so this is part of, of what I will be doing together with a PhD who is also here. We have uh, the University of Southern Denmark in Odense, represented by Peter Starke, um, looking also into public policies mainly uh, and emotions. Uh, we have our project management. We are very happy to have you on board. Sandra from Berlin, from URIS, who is doing uh, all the stuff related to the technicalities with the European Commission. Uh, we have already, uh, what I said, uh, we have Katarzyna here from Warsaw, from the Institute of Psychology of the Polish Academy of Science. Sciences, especially uh, implicated in the work with the survey and the uh, survey experiments we want to do. Uh, we have Mosse from Tel Aviv, I don't know whether he's online, um, uh, from Reichman University, a political scientist and public administration scholar, um, who will also be mainly on the work packages on public policy. And then we are in Coimbra with Lisette and Cristiano. You already uh, have seen Cristiano and Lisette is sitting over there. Uh, very much, uh, yeah, really thanks a lot for, for this super nice uh, kickoff and, and very much uh, implicated in this work package call. We also look at social identification and social representation. And then finally, last but not least, uh, Teresa from the University of Southampton, um, po political science, uh, political psychology, um, and also part of of Protemo, especially the focus groups. So this is the consortium, uh, and we are looking forward to um, to working together. One last slide, um, uh, Beatrice will quickly uh, comment on, is uh, about the impact, uh, which is also important in new projects, and also uh, I think important to us, to all of us, because um, we think that emotions are a part that is under research, but also something that uh, politics has to. Uh, grapple with in the next uh, decades, and that's why it's important for us to talk quickly about impact. Yes, uh, first of all, I apologize because I'm going to be uh, behind uh, the screen. I cannot see so well, so I have to be close to it, otherwise, I cannot read. So I'm here, but uh, I'm going to just listen to my voice. Um, something that's very important to Protemo since we aim to bridge this very micro level of the individual affects and emotions and the very micro level of policy making is to have this exchange with civil society and the policy community. So um, that means that we want to have interaction with them not only in the position of the researchers and objects of research, but that we aim to have some sort of co-creation. Uh, the way that Proteo seeks to do that is to engage in them in lots of workshops and uh, round tables. Uh, out of that, uh, we plan to have uh, lots of outputs uh, that are not only academic publications, but of course, uh, are mainly oriented to that, but we are also going to include uh, open source databases. Uh, we are going to have uh, online booklets that are aimed, uh, for example, for um, organizations, social movements, um, projects that deal directly in the field with uh, migrants, refugees, uh, non citizens, and also with citizens. And we have also uh, policy and thematic briefs that are going to translate the outcomes of this research and the outcomes of this uh, exchange also into possible and uh, maybe viable ways of integrating uh, emotions into the policy process and also in uh, making uh, um, the gaps between the groups maybe more um, bringing to a better dialogue maybe. So um, the medium term outcomes uh, are uh, that we are planning to have is to reach the policy advisors. Uh, so that we have recommendations based on our research and our, also the needs of citizens. Mm -hmm. That's something that we really believe needs to be translated between uh, uh, several needs that cannot be so easily translated into the language that we have in the policy making, that does not really accommodate the language of emotions and uh, to talk about emotional needs. Uh, we are going to also include this approach in all our academic uh, outputs, of course, conferences, uh, the conference that we're organizing as well and all of our publications. 
We aim to uh, also to reach public administrations, so they are also going to be part of our network of stakeholders, and we plan to uh, be able to benefit from their expertise as well. And uh, we plan also to work with local communities. That's why we have also online um, in-presence workshops in at least six countries that are uh, part of our research. So with this, we plan to have uh, um, an implicit deal on the responsibility, responsibility uh, of the process. And then uh, we are not only going to write about this, but we are going to be able to uh, preach this to the policy making through interviews to see uh, in which way politicians also respond to that. Uh, and maybe we are going to be able to strengthen resilience uh, in uh, democracy as well by integrating emotions and um, effects. So long-term impact, uh, we have policy impacts, we have scientific impacts, and we have societal impacts. And uh, we think that it's uh, something that really, really need uh, for a better uh, democracy uh, in the future. And um, of course, we are not going to solve um, completely the lack, uh, but it's a way and a path to actually uh, seek to bridge this gap. Okay, thanks a lot. I think that was uh, our presentation.